guys, welcome back to Urban Rhino Tutorials. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to work with polymer clay, and we're gonna be making some fall-inspired, fall-themed earrings. So I have several colors here that I'm going to use, kind of a beige. This is more of like a cream color that has some little specks of glitter. This one that I would say is well, it even says rose gold and it has glitter in it as well. There's kind of a tan color. I mixed up some navy because for some reason I didn't have any navy. So I just mixed some blue and black together. More of a brown and then some white-ish ivory. <laughs> so those are the colors I'm going to be using. I do have a a machine that you can put the clay through that flattens it. It's like a, essentially like a pasta roller, but you can buy them specifically for the clay. And while I have that for this tutorial, because not everyone might not have access to that, I'm just gonna use a roller. So if you have like a rolling pin or something, you could use that. I'm using the back of a couple of molds that I have. So as long as you have some kind of silicone mat that you can roll these on, it won't stick. I also have these triangle shaped connectors that I'm going to use in conjunction with the triangle shapes that I cut out. So when my earrings are finished, the top part will be this triangle of metal. The bottom is also going to be a triangle of the clay design that I make and they'll be connected like this and then the ear wire will be on the top and they'll have a little jump ring in between to connect them together. So I'm gonna set these to the side, but this is the shape I wanna keep this so that I know what size to make my little pieces of the clay. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking several pieces of clay and I'm just going to break them apart like this and just kind of lay them out. I will tell you this generally gives you more than what you need and that's okay. I'm gonna take all my colors and do this. I'm also using gold leaf in this as well to add just some extra little bling. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay all these out. I'm gonna do about a four inch by four inch area. And I'm gonna just continue layering these up just like this, peeling off little sections of it. When I return, I'm gonna show you how we are going to roll this out. All right, so you can see I have my pieces all broken up and they are currently not really stuck together very well. So I'm going to go through, I'm just closing up my clay here so it doesn't dry out. I'm gonna go through and kind of press them just with my hands together. So when I put the roller over it, it doesn't just basically shift them around everywhere. So I'm kind of pre-pressing them just into place. Okay, as long as no more stick to my fingers, it should be pretty good there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my roller and I'm gonna go right over top of it and just press them together like this and flatten it out. I'm going to pick them up and notice I don't have my clay, or my, um, I'm sorry, my uh, gold leaf in here yet. I'm gonna go from the other side. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it. So I folded it into a small square and I'm going to roll it out one more time. And I'm trying to get this to the thickness of the of these little guys here, which are maybe an eighth of an inch. Let's see. 
Okay, I think that's pretty, pretty good. So now, I'm trying to decide which side I like better. I think I like this one. Now I'm going to lay my gold flake in there. And if you want to keep the pieces smaller, so like I originally had it, you could certainly do that and not fold it up. But I wanted to kind of stretch out the colors and put the gold leaf kind of on more as the focus. So I'm just going to pick up these pieces of gold leaf with my fingers and just kind of press them down. If you've never worked with gold leaf before, it's, I don't want to say it's sticky. That's not, not the right term, but it sticks to everything. It's weird. It's, it clings, I guess is a better description. So I'm just putting the gold leaf down. It folds up really small, like if you were to take a big piece and squish it all up, even more so than like foil. So I'm just spreading this out, nowhere in particular. I just want it distributed pretty evenly. I'm trying to get that piece off my fingers. There we go. I'm gonna put a little bit more. And then what we'll do from here is cut the shapes. So the triangles, I'm gonna do two extra if I have enough, or I might only do one if I only have enough for one extra. And then we're going to bake the clay. You bake the clay so that it stays, it kind of doesn't really harden it, I wouldn't say, but it you know, keeps it like a, you know, more permanent. So it's not soft like regular clay and it doesn't just dry out and get gross. Okay. I might put a little bit more there and then we'll be done with that. And to cut the shapes, there's a couple things you could do. So you could, you know, use a cookie cutter and just cut the shape exactly to the size that you want if you have the correct shape for what you're doing. I am going to actually use a, like a knife. So I'm gonna use a palette knife. You could use an X-Acto knife. And I'm gonna cut the, around the shape. So I'm gonna lay down the triangle pieces, the, the metal ones, and I'm going to cut around those. Let's put a little bit more. Then we'll be done. And you don't even have to roll this again. You just go through and kind of press it down really well. I love how easy it just sticks to everything. Generally, it's a good thing that it sticks. Sometimes it can be annoying, but let me get a little bit more here off of my fingers and then we're done. Kind of get around the sides. Okay, so pressing it all down. We're ready to cut our shapes. And what I'm gonna do before I cut the shapes is use my palette knife, make sure that this is loosened up underneath because I don't want to cut the shape and then try to pull it up and then it kind of stretches, you know, the, your your shape that you're cutting. That will happen if you're not careful. Okay, so it's nice and loose on the mat. Let me move this last little bit of gold, gold leaf. Alrighty. So now that I have my shapes, I'm going to determine where I want to put them. And I am just going to cut right beside them. Let me peel up my shape. 
And then from here, I'm gonna leave that for now and move on and do a few more. So I'm gonna repeat this and try to get as many of these triangles as I can because the reason for that is when you bake them, you might, you know, or even when you cut them out, you might determine that there are two that you like more than everything else or if something were to accidentally happen to one or whatever, you have some backups and you don't have to go through this whole process all over again. So I am going to cut out a few more of these. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple extra shapes while I have this clay that are just different. And then when I return, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do from there. So I've cut out the shapes. You can see I did three triangles. I feel like I'm probably gonna end up using these two right here. I also did these two teardrop ones that I just thought would be super cute to do. I would just put a hole in those and make them like dangle earrings. And then I made two little circles that could be turned into stud earrings. So with just that little bit of clay, Realistically, you could probably get three to six pairs of earrings, depending on how you stretch it out. Now, you might be wondering what I would do with this leftover clay. So now, if I take it and kind of all, I'm, I'm trying to keep the gold leaf side out, but I can, again, push it all together and roll it out. And I'm still left with clay that I can use, and it just looks, you know, a little bit different. I could add more gold leaf to it. Let me flatten it out a little bit more. There's a little part there. Um, I could add more gold leaf. I actually like this. It kind of looks more abstract here, but you could certainly cut out just more of whatever shapes that you wanted. So for now, I'm gonna set this one to the side and move on. So I am ready to bake these. And you might say, well, what about the holes that you're gonna attach them with? I have found that instead of poking the holes in them now, it is actually easier to go back and drill the holes into them. And the reason for that is sometimes when you take like a needle tool and poke your hole through it, it starts to kind of stretch the clay in that area and even though you try to smooth it out, oftentimes it just ends up more of a mess than what you're wanting. So if you bake them, let them harden, and then go back with a really small drill bit and drill into them, you get a nice clean hole through them. Now, obviously for the stud earrings, I wouldn't do anything to them except glue the stud post to the back of those. When I, after I bake these, for the teardrop ones, I would just put two little holes on the top to attach the ear wires. On the triangle shapes, I'm gonna actually need to put three holes because this connector that I'm gonna be using, you can see has three holes there. So I'll put a jump ring on each spot to connect them like this. And those will be so cute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bake these. Now this particular um, Sculpey Polymer Clay, they kind of vary on the temperature but I will tell you that if you're using the polymer clay oven, generally if you just preheat the oven for 15 minutes and let it run, you know, preheat for 15, run for 15 minutes, you're good to go. If you're baking it in a regular oven, I would definitely follow the instructions. Most of them are very close in temperature, but some you have to bake for 15 minutes, some bakes for 30 minutes, it just depends on the clay. Now, when you mix it all together, Again, this is just my personal experience. If you're baking them in a regular oven, if you generally kind of average out the times, it tends to work just fine. I think this is just for the absolute, you know, perfect experience, but realistically, it tends to, to work just fine. So just make sure you follow the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these baked and let them cool down. When I return, we're gonna drill the holes and assemble the earrings. The earrings are done. They have come out of the oven and I did, when they came out, after I let them cool down, I did spray a little bit of clear polyurethane on them just to give them a little bit of shine. That is certainly not 
necessary. It's just optional. I will say that it kind of darkens the colors. So if you don't want them, if you don't want that effect to make sure that you don't use it, but it's, it's not necessary. I just kind of like the shine to them. So you can see, I have my two little studs and all I would do with those is take a stud post like this and glue it to the back and then you would have a finished set of earrings. So I'm not gonna do those right now because the focus is on these other, one, other ones. And now with these, same thing, I would drill a hole. Sorry, same thing as these. Drill a hole in the top, attach a jump ring in the ear wires and these are finished. But our focus is on these. So what we're gonna do is make sure that I have them turned the way I want. Um, let's see. I don't really think it matters even a little bit, but I just wanna, all right, I think we're gonna go like that. So I need to drill three small holes and I need to make sure that they line up with the triangle that I have here. So what I can do is I could put that on top if I'm very careful and drill them that way, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put my, putting the triangle right on top of these, and then I can use that as a guide to put my drill through. And when I drill, I usually use a little block. If I can grab it here, just any kind of scrap wood that you can use that you can drill into so you don't you know accidentally drill into your table and what i'm going to do is use a little piece of tape that's not sticky let's get this painter's tape and i'm just going to tape it down so that it doesn't slide around on me while i am trying to drill the hole All right, now that I have that in place, I have a very small drill bit and I'm going to drill through these. Trying to get it in just the right spot. There we go. Let's check that out. If I can get the tape off the back. And like I said, by doing it this way, you should get a nice clean hole through those. Very nice. And I'm gonna do the same to the other one real quick. Now those are ready to put together. So again, I'm gonna put this on the top here. I'm going to tape them right in place. Alrighty. Now we are ready to attach the little triangle connector. I'm gonna move all my stuff out of the way here. So what I'm gonna do is take some jump rings and the space it takes to get from this hole to here is pretty significant and whether or not you want to have a gap is also going to matter. So that will depend on the size of the jump ring that you choose. If you don't want there to be a gap, you could do a little bit smaller one. If you do want a gap between them, then you need one that's a little bit bigger so it can reach. So I want a small gap between them. I'm going to try 
this size and see how I like it. I might move up a size. So I'm just going to open my jump ring. I need to open it pretty far so that I can work it through there. And then I'm just attaching the middle point first. I'm going to close it up. And let's see. Yeah, I think that's good. So that gives a little bit of a gap. It can swing. I'm going to obviously hook the other two as well. So um, let me go ahead and hook all of these together. And then when I return, I'm going to show you how to hook on the ear wire and then we'll be all finished up. So you can see they're connected. So cute. Just like this. And now I'm going to attach the ear wire on the top, earring hook, whatever you want to call it. And for these, I'm going to use a little, probably a smaller jump ring. I go down a little bit in size. I'm going to open it. Connect it onto the little opening, the hole at the top. Hook on my ear wire. Close it up. You want to make sure the ear wire is facing the direction that you want, you know, your earrings to hang forward. So you don't want the ear wire backwards so that you see the back of the earrings. So that part's important. And now all finished. So cute. Let me do this one real quick. And I will as usual include links in the description below where you can purchase these supplies if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and that almost is it Let me get this last little bit here there we go so that is it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys.